All right, guys, before we get started here, I'm going to give you a real quick tour of the tools and the components that we're going to be using for today's project. I'm using a half inch brass round blank, and um, this we're going to go for a real delicate look here. That's what's kind of on trend, these uh, delicate chains and charms. I've got my steel bench block, and you can see I've already taped my blank down. I'm using stamp straight tape for that. I've also got my brass stamping hammer by Impress Art. I am using stamp enamel to, dar to darken my letters. Um, when we finish off the necklace, we're going to be using a pair of jewelry pliers, just chain nose pliers. Um, we're going to use a hand hole punch. You can also use a screw down hole punch. That'll work just fine. A one millimeter chain. I'm using a 16 inch chain that is a real fine chain to go with the nice light charms that we're making today. And a couple of four millimeter jump rings. And the star of the show, of course, I am using the Bridget font uh, from Impress Art. And these are premium metal stamps. The nice thing about buying the premium ones when you can, these have a lifetime guarantee on them and these will actually stamp stainless steel. So if you want to do something like spoons, if you do like a lot of repurposing, some mixed media stuff, then it's um, it's nice to spend just a few more dollars and invest in the premium stamps rather than the regular ones. But for today's project, if all you have are standard stamps, those will work just fine. So brass is slightly harder to stamp on than aluminum and pewter, so you are going to have to hit your... Um, hit your stamps just a little bit harder when you're using brass, but it shouldn't be um, too bad here. So with that introduction, <laughs> let's get stamping. So to get started stamping, I gotta find my letter here. All right. Now, what's nice about the Impress Art stamps is they've got the letter right on the front here. That way you always know when it's facing you that you always know you've got your letter right side up. I'm only going to be using one uppercase letter today because my kids both have the same um, first initial. So I've got my blank tape down here and what I've, do, what I've done here is I've set the baseline for where I'm going to stamp. As you stamp, you're going to want to set your stamp down. Just drag it real gently until you feel it catch on the edge of your stamp straight tape. And then you want to take your hammer and you want to just strike it once. So one nice firm tap. And that's that. I gotta open up my lower case here. Should have done that before I got started. Now, I my personal preference is just to start at one side and work my way from left to right just the same way that you would read, just the same way that you would handwrite. Some people like to start in the middle and work outward or start at the ends and work their way towards the middle. It's up to you how you want to make sure that your stamping is right, how your alignment is right. But that's just my personal preference is to start at the left and go to the right. And I'm just aligning these. Each time I pull them towards the tape, make sure you've got it straight up and down and give it one firm tap there. My son's name is Roman, so that's what I'm stamping here today. And I'm finished with that. Not sure, hopefully you can see, maybe you can't quite tell with the, uh, I'll make sure to give you a close up at the end here. But I've just fit the five letters right across. This is the three millimeter font. So this is a perfect size for a word or a phrase or a name in this case, that's five letters or less. Now, when I do my daughter's name here, she has a Y in her name. And when we get to letters like Y or P or J that have the descenders that hang lower than what the basic, you know, what your baseline would be, I'm gonna show you a little trick that works well for me. So I've got my uppercase R and I'm gonna put that back. I do like to put my stamps back in between each time. Just that way I know that I'm not getting them mixed up at all. And I'm going to skip over, she's R-A-Y-A, -A. I'm just going to skip over the Y, and I'm going to place that second A. Now I'm going to take my tape off, and I'm going to replace it at the tops of these A's. And this will help keep the vertical alignment, because it can be kind of difficult 
um, to eyeball. It's one thing to go, you know, your letter spacing, I think that that's pretty easy to see visually. But when you've got your stamp covering up your work, it's sometimes really hard to tell vertically if you've got it too high or too low. And that's where the stamp straight tape comes in. But in this case, I'm going to be placing it and I'm going to drag it up toward the tape. And I've got my Y centered between my two A's here. And just give that a tap. So now that I have both of these discs stamped, we're going to use the stamp ammo. Now, this is an alternative to, um, in the past I've typically used a permanent marker or um, acrylic paint. And those are both fine options, but I really, really like the stamp enamel now that I've used it because it's nice and thick. You can put it directly into these little impressions. And what we're going to do is we're just going to squeeze it in there, make sure it gets inside all the letters, and set it aside to dry for 10 seconds. So in that amount of time, I'm going to do my other one here. And it's okay, it's kind of globbed on here for now. I'm just going to wipe my tip here before I cap that back off. My first one should be ready now. And I'm just going to wipe off this excess here. As long as you don't let it sit for too long, you shouldn't have any trouble wiping that off. And this is going to make sure that you don't over polish your piece. I get it sometimes, especially if I'm using, you know, copper or, or even brass or anything that's been treated, that I kind of tend to over polish it when I'm cleaning things up. So this is a really, really nice way to make sure that that doesn't happen. And there we go. I've got two blanks, two names, with nice dark impressions. So at this point, we can be finished with the stamping. Well, if you wanted to, you could stamp. Um, the new Impress Art Kits come with design stamps, too, if you want to stamp a heart or a star or really whatever you like. It comes with a few freebies, which is actually really cool because, you know, it can get kind of expensive when you're <laughs> um, buying all those extra different designs. But I'm going to skip that. We're going for kind of a minimalist look today. And I'm going to find the center top here. And that is not it. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to kind of go off camera here probably to make sure I get this baby right. Do it right the first time, right? And what I've done here, I'm just, I've just lined it up and I'm going to punch a hole at the top of my blank here. And what's nice about these, it's got a screw down stopper. I won't accidentally punch it and mar the surface of my disc. This will stop me from going too far, but it will make sure that I can just punch right through. Just like that. Right. One and two. So at this point, all that's left to do is just add a jump ring on here and close her up. Another one here. And add them on to my chain here. And again, any nice fine chain is going to work well to stick with the delicate theme we've got going here. And if you're looking, you want to choose a one millimeter chain and a length of about 16 inches is, is pretty well perfect. So with that, I've got my delicate charm necklace. Hey, I'm Adrienne and let's do some fast crafts. Be sure to subscribe and check me out at happyhourprojects.com. Thank you.